at the lateral femoral and the lateral tibial combines, sometimes fibular pain. This is the typical for ACL pain. Uh, this is the deep sarcus or lateral knob sign. We can see it in the, in the lateral x ray, uh, uh, cortical depression more than 2 millimeters, and you can see it in the MRI uh, uh, via uh, 2 millimeter depression associated with subcortical normal contusion. This is a, a case of ACL abortion of the anterior tibial spine at the attachment uh, of the anterior crochet ligament. Uh, ACL may be associated with lipotium arthrosis. We can see here uh, a fat blood level that is lipotium arthrosis associated with uh, an abortion fraction of the anterior tibial spine with avulsive ACL. Anterior tibial displacement it is considered positive if tibia is placed more than 5 mm. So if we take a right tangent to the posterior aspect of the tibia condyle and another one to the femoral cortex, if it is more than 5 mm, this is considered anterior tibial displacement. Parting of the posterior crochet ligament carried out by uh, drawing a line along the posterior aspect of ACL, it must intersect the medullary cavity of the distal femur within 5 cm. If not, this may buckling of posterior crochet ligament and it is one of the second signs of ACL tear. Pitfalls and challenges in the diagnosis of ACL include volume aversion, of course, if, if I take uh, uh, wide slices like uh, uh, 5 or 6 millimeters, uh, there will be overlapping structures and I may miss torn uh, ACL ligament. Uh, the normal heterogeneity of ACL signal intensity, especially at its tibial attachment, due to fact interspersed within the fibers of ACL, and this is, should not be confused with injury. Uh, one of the uh, common associations uh, uh, in aging uh, process is ACL nicole degeneration. And I will, I will talk about this a bit. Uh, sometimes ACL may be like a possible accident. Severe normal ACL chronic injury, with chronic injuries, ACL may be absent or atrophic. With conservative therapy, partial and full thickness ACL claims can regain continuity, and a normal signal begins to resolve. And the problem is the, the ACL regains its normal thickness and signal intensity. And so I have to resolve to uh, the secondary signs. So if, if uh, the ACL apparently normal in chronic ACL pair, I have to uh, search for the secondary signs. Okay? ACL repair degeneration, it occurs with aging process, typically in elderly patients. Uh, it is possible that the repair degeneration may be a predisposing factor with guided assist for problem with ACL repair degeneration. Uh, the typical appearance, the left silver stone, the one halves, on the halves appearance, uh, it is intact fibers with the uh, core material in the field. So it gives the appearance of silver stone. And must be differentiated from partial thickness. In this image, this is the normal SEL, this is partially torn SEL, this is intact fibers, and this is abnormal. Uh, two uh, uh, fibers of ACL, and this is the report uh, material in between the uh, intact ACL fibers. This is the point degeneration. Post of ACL, uh, ACL reconstruction is nowadays one of the commonest uh, orthopedic surgeons. Uh, the prevalence of recurrent uh, recurrent instability post-operative. It's about uh, 1 to 8 percent due to uh, early six months, either post, uh, post the poor surgical technique, uh, failure of graft incorporation, or errors in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Later on, uh, most of you do the new form. Uh, techniques, there are two techniques double bounded for uh, tunnel technique and single bounded two tunnel technique. We use uh, uh, either uh, uh, bone, central, a tendon bone, or full strength, half-string left, 
from exhibit in the Lufus, Brasilis, Kendons, or both. Uh, rough material for SEM, uh, uh, it depends on the age, gender, activity, degree of laxity, and other uh, concurrent operations, for example, risca tears or uh, post lateral or post medial coronal injuries. Uh, as general guidelines, it is either autographs or allografts. As I mentioned, the most commonly used, the telecandron, uh, uh, the hamstring, hamstring tendons, and pilot system. Uh, the position of the thumb is uh, very important in evaluation of the post operative ACL. Uh, for the femoral thumb, it should be placed far as possible without disrupting the posterior contents of the femur. Ideally, 2 mm thick cortical beam should remain. So, uh, in this coronal image, this is the femoral thumb. It must be, you must leave. 2 mm cortical thickness. And uh, in the uh, right knee, it, this is the right knee, the femoral down, it, uh, it is at 10 to 12 drop. In the left knee, it is 1 to 2 drop position. This is the uh, femoral tunnel in the coronal plane. In the surgical plane, we draw a line along the posterior cortex of the femur and another line along the plumbing set line or the roof of intercondylar notch. And the, the inferior portion of the uh, uh, femoral tunnel should open at the intersection of these two lines. This is the femoral tunnel. The tibia tunnel, this is the uh, uh, coronal images and this is such the images. Uh, it should be oriented uh, parallel to the posterior slope of the endocondylar notch. Okay. And in the coronal plane, it should open at the uh, tibia end of the element. In the such image, the opening of the proximal tibia channel should be posterior to the intersection of the lumen sat line and the tibia. If it is anterior, it will be partial left. This is the correct position of the tibia and femoral panels. This is the femoral panel. This is the mid portion and this is the tibia panel. This is the correct position I have to search in assessment of uh, uh, SEL reconstruction. Graph signal is very important. You have to know uh, the duration of uh, the operation because it, it, the signal of the graph dif differ differs from uh, early to four to, three, to eight months and later after one year. At the start, early post-operative, it is hypervascular, low signal, between four to eight months there is vascularization or what's the ligamentization of the tendon and there will be high signal. So don't misinterpret as partial tear of the ACL graft. So the tear in the duration of four to eight months post operative you will find high signal normally due to ligamentization or hypervascularization. After one year, it returns to the low signal. So what are the post operative complications I have to search? Proof embellishment, partial graft tail, complete graft tail, arthrofibrosis, tarsis and widening, ATP band friction syndrome, hardware complications and infection. Proof embellishment, uh, it is about bimotroplasty actually. So, routinely uh, with SEL reconstruction, we do motroplasty to avoid proof embellishment. Uh, if proof embellishment is okay, uh, you will find with some concavity meal of the fibers of the ACL graft and the adormacy, either partial or sometimes full thickness fiber. This is avoided by torture passing. Uh, we may find partial graft tail due to bad uh, physics and rehabilitation. Uh, we will find abnormal signal within uh, the ACL graft and you can find intact fibers like this. This is high signal and intact fibers. Or complete graph tail like this. There is ill definition of the ACL graft and abnormal hyperintense signal at this normal side. So this, this is complete graph tail. After fibrosis, it is the formation of scar tissue in at least one compartment of the knee, a femoral or tibial femoral. Uh, types 
localized cyclops region or the fingers. It's named cyclops because it is an arthroscope. It appears like a head, eye with a head. So it is named cyclops region. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, fuse form, and this is the fuse. This is a diffuse form, and this is the focal form cyclops region of arthrophagus. Uh, sometimes small amount of fluid seen within the tibial or femoral tunnels. It is common in the tibial tunnel more than the femoral tunnels, with formation of cyst and widening of the tunnel, and this is paved. So, uh, uh, this is an example of tibial tunnel cyst. Uh, uh, there is small structures, there, is, there are very uh, 
uh, variations in the anatomy between populations. And the mean will be divided into four quadrants postulateral, antilateral, postmedial, and anterior. This is the grading of the uh, media ligament ligament uh, uh, tails. We have, as any ligament, uh, we have uh, uh, grade 1 spring, grade 2 partial thickness tail, and grade, grade 3 full thickness tail. Uh, the postmedial corner extends between the superficial media collateral ligament and the posterior cushion tail. All this area is postmedial corner region. The importance to, to recognize the uh, tone structures in this area to avoid the poor outcome of ACL and PCL reconstruction. Okay, so I, I have to uh, mention the, the postmedial corner and postural corner injuries to avoid the poor outcome of ACL and PCL reconstruction. So, what are the structures in postmedial corner? We have the uh, superficial middle collateral ligament. This is the posterior oblique ligament, okay, and this is the oblique popliteal ligament. We have the uh, unscreened tendons, sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. This is the semimembranosus uh, tendon, and this is the medial head gastrocnemius. And lastly, we have the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and the postmedial knee capsule. Okay, so these all structures compromise the post-media corner structures. So, the main findings to diagnose post-media corner injury is the edema and soft tissue, uh, edema, uh, edema in the capsule, the deficits and changes surrounding the posterior oblique and oblique of the ligaments, all of this with sometimes more bowel confusions in the post-media aspect uh, of the femur or tibia, uh, all these can diagnose postromedial corner injury. The, the main differential diagnosis is other causes of postromedial pain, which includes rupture paper cyst, paralysis cyst, or face and three bursitis. Uh, by the way, the most superior portion of the uh, medial patellar pinnacle is the medial patellar femoral ligament, and this is important. Instability of the patella. I'll discuss this in the, uh, with uh, patella matrix. Uh, this is the thickened medial plica or medial plica syndrome. This produces also pain in the acromedial aspect of the knee. This is an example of postmedial corner injury. We can find here soft tissue edema at the region of the uh, postmedial aspect with edematous. Posterior uh, uh, oblique and oblique popliteal ligaments. This is the region of posterior oblique and oblique popliteal ligaments. And we can find media, uh, uh, the ligaments edema of the medial collateral and posterior uh, oblique ligaments. So this is how to diagnose posterior medial corner injury. Another example, we can find uh, uh, also normal confusion on the posterior medial aspect of the medial femoral condyle, plus soft tissue edema around the postmedial aspect, especially around the posterior oblique and oblique popliteal ligaments. This is another example of postmedial corner injury. Again, bone marrow confusion and soft tissue edema. The uh, green uh, lesion, it is a spinous traumatic lesion uh, at the medial femoral uh, collateral ligament adjusted to the margin of the medial femoral condyle. Uh, the mechanism of injury, uh, usually a vaginal injury of the medial collateral ligament, it produces pain and limitation uh, in the range of motion. By X-ray, by X-ray there is calcification adjusted to the medial femoral condyle. Of open linear or cavilinear. Uh, MRI, MRI is sometimes difficult to recognize. So, let's say it's easier to recognize this uh, lesion. These are examples. 
So this, this is a side of the uh, linear or cantilever uh, uh, classification or classification. Uh, the linear collateral ligand adjacent to the uh, its origin at, of, uh, at the median femoral line. This is the fake X ray. Uh, this is in MRI. We have to measure here or something like a low signal of ossification. And this is uh, in CT. Okay. So we move to uh, the lateral supporting structures. We have also post lateral structures. These include lateral collateral ligament, this here one, the uh, fibrofibular ligament, the arcuate ligament, Y shaped, as I mentioned in the anatomy, uh, the uh, popliteal fibular ligament, okay, the popliteus muscle and its tendon, the biceps and lateral head gastrocnemius, and lastly, the posterior horn lateral meniscus and posterior knee capsule, posterior lateral knee capsule. These are the structures. I we have to identify these structures as a thought to avoid the uh, uh, bad outcome of SEL structure. These are the structures I mentioned. This is the lateral collateral ligament. This is a popliteus tendon. These are the uh, short and long heads of biceps femoris. And that runs obliquely along the posterior knee capsule is the oblique popliteal ligament. It runs from the tibia to the femur, back of the femur to the tibia. Uh, and this is to reinforce the knee capsule. This is the aortibial tract. It stands from the tensor fascia land above to the gerbis tubercle in the uh, anterolateral aspect of the tibia. This is the aortibial tract, and this is uh, its tibia insertion. So we may have a full thickness there of the lateral collateral ligament. Abnormal hyper intense signal with loss of integrity of the ligament. Uh, another full thickness set in the axial images. We see here uh, redundant, retracted uh, uh, fibers of the lateral collateral ligament. Uh, uh, here is this is uh, the normal, the normal lateral collateral ligament, and this is the uh, uh, partially torn lateral collateral ligament. Abnormal hyper intense signal within the upper fibers, so the diagnosis uh, is partial thickness there because it is intact fibers. Uh, uh, post lateral uh, contents injuries like the post medial injuries, uh, but in the, the cause of pain in the post lateral corner injuries is the irritation of the common peroneum. Okay, so this, this is what's post lateral corner, post, post -lateral corner is very painful. Because it may irritate the common peroneum. Okay? This is an example of the post lateral corner, partial thickness here of the lateral collateral ligament, soft tissue edema at the post lateral aspect, and ulnar contusions at atypical locations. Uh, the post lateral corner injury may be associated with PCL tape. So we have to diagnose that structures injured in the postnatal corner to avoid the bad outcome of PCL reconstruction in this case. Here we have soft tissue edema at the postnatal corner and normal confusion in atypical locations. Uh, we have here a biceps femoral tendon, full thickness there, lateral collateral ligament uh, tail, uh, the popliteus tendon is torn. And also the operative fibular ligament is torn. The, these are the four structures are torn here. Okay. In this uh, case, this is the arcuate ligament, partially torn, and this is uh, a partial thickness tear at the myotendinous junction of the popliteus. This is the popliteus tendon, and this is the remaining muscle, and this is uh, a tear at the myotendinous junction. Atypical uh, bad friction syndrome, as I told you. It may be a complication of SEL reconstruction, or it, it may occur in athletes for repetitive activity. Uh, there is overuse disorder, uh, uh, making friction in the aortibial band, and uh, diagnosed by presence of fluid either superficial or deep to the aortibial band. Uh, sometimes it is difficult, as I said, uh, in cases of uh, large joint effusion, lateral meniscal tear, or lateral collateral ligament. 
these are examples of AUD attract friction syndrome. There is expansion of the AUTP attract with abnormal fluid superficial and D to D that right. So uh, we face certain supporting structures, medium supporting structures, rapid supporting structures, and then the anterior supporting structures. These include the quadriceps tendon, jumper sleeve, patellar tendon, patellar femoral butt tracking, excessive blood pressure syndrome. Condroparatia papillae, bipartite papilla, hopefully and osteochtonal disease. This is an extensive mechanism composed of fibrosis tendon, patella, patellar tendon, tibia tuposcum, medial and gutta patellar tenacula, and vastus musculature. Example of the full thickness tear of fibrosis tendon. Usually you need uh, two centimeters of its uh, patellar attachment because it is uh, uh, a zone of hypervascularization, it may undergo some sort of tendinopathy and later on full thickness. Jumper's knee or patellar tendinitis, it is diagnosed by fusiform expansion of the patellar tendon with abnormal intermediate signal within its matrix. Sometimes associated with uh, edema of the lower pool of the patella or uh, edema of the hopeless cervical. Time? Ten minutes? Okay. Okay, patella femoral heart tracking. The patella is uh, stabilized by different structures, muscles, dynamic and static stabilizers. Okay? The most important of this, the medial uh, lateral patellar tenacula, and the most important of the medial uh, tenacula is the medial patellofemoral ligament, which is the upper fibers of the medial patellar tenacula. This is subluxate, this is the normal patellofemoral articulation, this is a subluxate uh, joint, it is still in congruity with the joint, this is completely dislocated patella. This is an example of lateral patellar dislocation. Uh, uh, this, uh, this form of fusions are typically location. That is, medial border of the patella and the lateral aspect of the uh, uh, lateral femoral condyle. Associated with four medial patellar femoral ligaments. This is the medial patellar femoral ligament, and this is the typical form of fusion. This is just the subluxation of the uh, patella due to shallow dysplastic femoral trauma. These are the risk factors for the telemetry tracking. The important of these are the tropical dysplasia, lateralization of tibia tuberosity, and increased QM. Also, patella alta, patella tilt, and patella morphology affects the patella femoral tracking. We have uh, different classifications of the patella morphology and the tropical morphology. We have uh, uh, viral classification of patella morphology, type 1, type 2, type 3. The idea is type 1, which is equal uh, medial and lateral patella facet, and, and they are both concave. The type 2 and type 3 predisposing to patella, uh, patella femoral mark tracking. Also, the, the trophia, the short classification of the trophia, there are different morphological features. Uh, uh, type B is the worst. We have uh, patella patella firm ranking with increasing number of the types. Uh, there, are more, there are important measurements uh, in, uh, to detect or diagnose patella firm tracking. Uh, I'll go this uh, in a hurry. Uh, trochial depth assessment. It must be more than three millimeters. If it is less, so it is this plastic uh, trochia and it is supposed to uh, patella dislocation. We have the trochial facet asymmetry assessment. We calculate these uh, uh, distances. If it is more than 40%, like here, it is normal. It's 68%. If it is less than 40%, it will be disposed to patellar subluxation or dislocation. We have the lateral trochial inclination measurements. If it is more than 10 degrees, it is normal trochial. If it is less, it is this plastic uh, uh, trochial. The patellar high pressure, there are two uh, uh, indices. 
Uh, and overall, uh, the ratio uh, between a, a point a, 1.3 it is normal. Uh, if it is above 1.3, it is patella alpha. If it is below 0.8%, uh, uh, it is patella alpha. This, this is the normal, and this is the patella alpha, and this is the patella alpha. This is important also to get the cross tropical proof TTPG assessment. If it is less than 15 millimeters, it is normal. If it is between 15 to 20, it is borderline. If it is more than 20 millimeters, it is abnormal. Patella tilt assessment. If it is within 5 degrees, it is normal. If it is less than 0 degree, it is abnormal. So these are measurements of the patellofemoral uh, uh, mark plane. Excessive lateral pressure syndrome, it is, uh, it is a sort of tightness of the lateral patellar retinaculum and laxity of the medial patellar retinaculum. So the patella tilt to the lateral aspect without subluxation. This tilt uh, exerts pressure on the uh, lateral femoral condyle and then coronal injury of the lateral patellar facet and the lateral femoral parochial facet. This is lateral, excessive lateral pressure syndrome. And sometimes it is overlooked. This one of the overlooked lesions, the excessive lateral pressure syndrome, or sometimes uh, uh, we, we name it lateral pressure compression syndrome. Mohammed, there should be edema to report it or uh, just subject? Uh, injury or subcondyl edema. You start with condyl edema and I'll, then support the edema. Without this, I won't uh, report. Yes. Okay. Plus, tightness of the lateral patellar retinaculum and laxity of medial patellar retinaculum with abnormal tilt of the patella. Like this image. You see, this is the normal and this is the abnormal tilt. The patella is tilted and compressing the lateral femoral condyle. This leads to compression and condyltation. Okay. Uh, Condomation patella will have four grades. Uh, of condromation of belly, uh, focal increase of uh, 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 high signal within normal contour, grade 2 fissuring and fibrillation, grade 3 partial thickness steer uh, uh, loss uh, more than 2 mm depth and more than uh, uh, 13 mm diameter arthroscopy, uh, and lastly grade 4 with associated with an underlying normal beginning. These are the grades of condromation of belly. Again, this is the images. This abnormal hyper intense signal, grade 1. This is uh, uh, grade 2 of the medial patellar facet. This is grade 3 of the medial patellar facet and fissuring grade 1 of the lateral patellar facet. This is complete for grade 4 condomination patellae with total loss of the uh, uh, cartridge covering. By the time patella, it is incidental uh, discovery with uh, imaging. I just uh, bring it to, uh, to put some, some, somebody uh, who is diagnosed with a uh, fra fraction patella. No, it is bypass type uh, The most common, uh, there, are, there are three types. The most common is the third type at the supralateral margin of the patella. Uh, uh, second one, the lateral aspect. And lastly, the inflow. So these are the types of bypass type A whole aspect, uh, third time in management is very important entity. Uh, we have uh, 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 anterior suprapatellar fat, posterior suprapatellar fat, and infrapatellar fat, which is named Hofus fat pack. Sometimes uh, uh, fat in management occurs, and I know this by abnormal hyper intense signal within the fat. Okay, so these are examples. Infrapatellar fat pack in management. In cases of patella alpha, especially the femur, uh, the, 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 the fat is merged between the patella and femur, and this will lead to hyper intense signal. This is fat hair impairment. Uh, this is example of a posterior suprapatellar fat hair impairment, abnormal hyper intense signal within the fat. And this is example of anterior suprapatellar. Fat management, this is a magnified one. 
diagnosed by abnormal hyperintense signal or facts of present condition. Okay. And this is example. I will not describe this is example. So in all abnormalities, we can find single fraction, with, which is a larger fraction of the left ventricular control. And you have reverse single fraction, which is a larger fraction from the media ventricular. This is the example of a, a sequence, and on the other side, the reverse sequence fraction. Okay. Osteochondritis dissecans. Uh, this, this is the spectrum of osteochondritis dissecans of the knee pain, of the knee joint. We have uh, uh, inside grade 1, uh, osteochondral flag, grade 2, detached osteochondral body, grade 3, and Dislodged osteochondral body, grade 4. The common sites, the most common site is the every medial aspect of the medial femoral. This is example on the plate X ray of osteochondritis discans of osteochondral defect. And this is the MR appearance with loose body, dislodged in the supracatellar synovialysis. Subchondral insufficiency and subchondral fraction. Which of which safe subchondral fraction, okay? Because it, it must subchondral fraction occurs in elderly osteopathic, then osteonecrosis. So safe replacing sunk subchondral insufficient fracture replacing spontaneous osteoporosis. This is this is important because it is. For four lesion or four characteristic edema lesion, uh, the, the usual history, young adult, uh, athlete, coming with pain without trauma or injury. So uh, we find abnormal bone formal edema parallel to the uh, epiphysis. So it is named focal perifisian edema lesion. Fabella syndrome, the favela is enlarged, it may compress the lateral femoral condyle, leading to contrary injury or bone marrow bruises. This is Fabella syndrome. Okay, I'll go to the three folds. Okay. Thank you very much for